This is the story of Thomas Sankara, a proponent of Pan-Africanism and a heroic leader from Burkina Faso. Sankara challenged the conventional ways of doing things, leaving a lasting impression on his countrymen during his three and a half years in office. Often called the African Che Guevara, Sankara was a visionary who changed the name of his homeland from its colonial label, Upper Volta, to Burkina Faso, the land of the upright. As the president of Burkina Faso, one of the poorest countries in Africa, he sought to change the lives of the Burkina Bay for good. He held that position until 1987, when he was killed during a coup which had been organized by his longtime friend, Blaise Compaore. People suspect that France and or the CIA were also involved as they were displeased by Sankara's radical and progressive policies. This episode is a brief account of the life and legacy of Thomas Sankara, the Pan-Africanist and Burkina Faso's upright man. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and to click the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new uploads that come out every Monday and Friday. Thomas Sankara was born on the 21st of December 1949 in Yako, French Upper Volta. He was the third of ten children and he was born to Joseph and Margaret Sankara. When he was growing up, his Roman Catholic parents wanted him to become a priest, but he chose to enter the military. The military was popular at the time, having just ousted a president that many people despised. Another incentive for his decision to join the military was that acceptance into the military academy would come with a full scholarship. Sankara was also passionate about music and he played the guitar. In 1970, at the age of 20, Sankara was sent for officer training in Madagascar. While he was in Madagascar, he witnessed a popular uprising of students and workers that succeeded in toppling Madagascar's government. It was also in Madagascar where he first read the works of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, and this profoundly influenced his political views for the rest of his life. Before returning to the Upper Volta in 1972, Sankara attended a parachute academy in France, where he was further exposed to left-wing political ideologies. It was in 1974 where he would earn much public attention for his heroic performance in the border war with Mali. But years later, he would renounce the war as having been useless and unjust. Thomas Sankara rose through the military ranks and in 1976, he became the commander of one of the commando training centers. It was in the same year that he met his ally and the man who would eventually lead a coup against him, Blaise Compaore. Sankara was an eloquent public speaker and a dedicated soldier and this made him a popular choice for political office. He was appointed the Minister of Information in Sire Zerbo's military government in September of 1981. However, he would clash with his colleagues in government because of his unconventional style. Sankara would bike to work every day instead of driving a car. While his predecessors would censor journalists and newspapers, Sankara encouraged investigative journalism and allowed the media to print whatever it found. This led to publications of government scandals by both privately owned and state-owned newspapers. After another coup which brought to power Major Dr. Jean-Baptiste Odrago, Sankara became Prime Minister in January of 1983. This post provided him an entryway into international politics and a chance to meet with revolutionary leaders such as Fidel Castro from Cuba and Samora Machel from Mozambique. These interactions further reinforced these left-wing ideologies. Sankara's anti-imperialist stance and grassroots popularity increasingly put him at odds with President Odrago. This led to Sankara being removed as Prime Minister and being arrested. His arrest angered a subsection of young military officers and on the 4th of August 1983, Base Kampaori, Sankara's friend, led a coup that freed Sankara and formed the National Council of the Revolution with Sankara as its president. The weapons that were used to overthrow that government came from Libya's Colonel Gaddafi. Gaddafi saw himself as a revolutionary who came to support another revolutionary movement. You can check the Gaddafi video in the description box below. Upon getting into power, Sankara was determined to give the country a new identity. He changed the country's name from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means the land of the upright. He also gave the country a new flag and wrote the new national anthem. Sankara is renowned for some of the policies that he put in place when he came into power. He was a man on a mission to shake up the status quo and improve the livelihoods of the people of Burkina Faso. I will attempt to lay out some of Thomas Sankara's numerous achievements and folks prepare to be blown away. 
He vaccinated 2.5 million children against meningitis, yellow fever, and measles in just a matter of weeks of taking power. Sankara initiated a nationwide literacy campaign, increasing the literacy rate from 13% in 1983 to 73% in 1987. In his three and a half years in power, his government planted over 10 million trees to prevent desertification. He would also work towards the upliftment of the Bekinabi women. Sankara was one of the very first African leaders to appoint women to high government positions and also encourage them to have formal jobs. Women were also recruited into the army. Female genital mutilation was also outlawed, as well as forced marriages and polygamy. I'm pretty sure that this following policy that I'm going to state was jaw-dropping and caused a lot of indignation for Sankara from his colleagues in government and other African leaders who were used to opulence that came with being in office. Sankara sold off the government fleet of Mercedes cars and made the Renault 5 the official service car of the ministers. He also reduced the salary of all his public servants and forbade the use of government chauffeurs and first-class airline tickets. In case you're wondering if all these measures apply to him, well, don't be. This guy led by example. He lived on a salary that he kept at the equivalent of 462 US dollars per month. His few assets were public knowledge and they were a car that was an unimposing Peugeot 205, a refrigerator, a few bicycles and several guitars. This guy was very serious. Sankara redistributed the land from the feudal landlords and gave it directly to the masses. Wheat production rose in three years from 1,700 kgs per hectare to 3,800 kgs per hectare, making Burkina Faso self-sufficient. Hold on folks, there's still more to come. Thomas Sankara believed that Burkina Faso could learn to sustain itself without foreign aid. He refused aid packages from the International Monetary Fund that he said came with strings attached. One of his famous quotes was, The one who feeds you usually imposes his will upon you. Sankara would try to persuade other African countries to collectively refuse to pay their financial debts to their former colonizers. I'm pretty sure this produced high levels of condemnation from some very powerful people. There are some people who also point out to some of the not-so-good things that happened during Sankara's time in office. There have been reports of human rights abuses, including cases of torture, detention and other violations. Sankara's revolutionary zeal led him to allegedly target certain elements of the society as enemies and they were persecuted. Despite all of Sankara's progressive reforms, however, by 1987, Sankara's government was also in trouble. In his attempts to root out corruption, Sankara set up public tribunals that tried nearly 1,000 government officials and civil servants for the misuse or theft of public funds. Many lost their jobs, plenty without just cause, and this angered many of the country's elite. Sankara's policies also antagonized France and its ally, the Ivory Coast. During this whole process, Sankara also suspected that his right-hand man, Blaise Compaore, might be plotting a coup. Compaore had lost faith in the revolution. On October 15, 1987, Sankara was killed by an armed group along with 12 other officials in a coup d'etat organized by Blaise Compaore. Sankara's body was dismembered and he was quickly buried, while his widow, Mariam, and two children fled the nation. Sankara was 37 at the time. Once Blaise Compaore assumed the role of president, he immediately reversed the nationalizations of the country's resources, overturned nearly all of Sankara's policies, and rejoined the International Humanitary Fund as well as the World Bank. Compaore would remain in power for 27 years until he was overthrown by the popular protest in 2014. The legacy of Sankara still reverberates in Burkina Faso and across the continent of Africa, even 33 years after his death. An author of Thomas Sankara's biography, Ernest Hash, once said in an interview that Sankara was ahead of his time among African leaders in terms of promoting women's rights and putting it on the agenda. And he promoted women into the cabinet, which was quite unusual in African countries at the time. Sankara was also determined to improve the livelihoods of his people in an era where most African leaders are in power either for their own benefit or for their family, political parties or a particular ethnic group. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about Thomas Sankara. This has been today's episode of African Biographics. Remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.